I, I tell you, it's more difficult than seeing people who might be on the street for a period of time and something's happened in life and they probably never will recover right. and you're, you're, you're helping them because they need help right. is when you see people that are middle class and right. they've lost their job and they've lost their insurance and they've lost their home and you're looking at these people realizing you are them yeah. and they are you yeah. um, and you know next year you might be the one yeah. in that line It's 5 a.m. Sunday, August 21st, 2011, in Chicago. Hundreds of people have waited outdoors overnight in the rain to receive one of the 400 numbers that would allow them to pass through the doors of Malcolm X College and obtain free medical care. This was the last opportunity of this three-day event. The free clinic was made possible by Chicago's Cure Network and Remote Area Medical a volunteer organization from Tennessee. Uh, we've been here since 11.15 last night. <laughs> and we came to get services, medical services, as well as dental services. Um, due to, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to keep up with the, the cost, so they're offering it for free. And we figured that we can, between both of us, we can knock quite a few things out in one day, uh, which is a blessing. And uh, health care is so expensive uh, for all the different things that they're offering here that we can get free that we can hardly afford with health care. And we're from Dwight Michigan. So yeah, we're from We came all the way from Michigan. We came from Michigan. Volunteer medical professionals from throughout the Chicago area teamed up with others from as far away as California and Washington to offer free medical, dental, and vision care. Illinois is only one of two states that allows physicians and nurses from outside its boundaries to provide volunteer medical services to those in need. These caring and compassionate individuals came together for three days to make this truly unique opportunity a reality. I'm um, a local nurse from the Chicagoland area. I read about this in the um, Suburban Life newspaper a couple months ago. Since I've been here, I've been in the triage area as a nurse, and I've actually also worked a little bit in the dental clinic last night as a nurse, which nurses don't normally work in dental clinics, so it was really enlightening to me. Um, as a nurse, triaging what we do is we take um, pe people's medical history, we go over their medications, we go over their allergies, their immunizations, we discuss how they've been feeling, if they've had any signs of symptoms that are anything new, and if they do, um, we put it on their health history and we alert the doctors on it. So we have hygienists in there, we have oral surgeons in there, and we also have dentists. So we're having oral surgery done, regular dental work being done, and then we're having the hygienist doing the cleaning. Um, the majority of the people here are here for vision, for medical help, and for uh, dentistry. The majority of people that we have seen here are, of course, uninsured. Most of them are, every one of them, it says their occupation, they're all unemployed. Mm -hmm. And most of them, when I ask them where they live, they mainly live in homeless shelters. You know, right. they jump from shelter to shelter. Right. So, us seeing people that have un uncontrolled hypertension and diabetes, this goes along with how their lifestyle is. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of people with hypertension today that didn't take any of their blood pressure meds because they've been in line all night. I've seen a lot of um, psych patients come through, so we've had a lot of bipolar people here today. Right. I know this from the medication we're on, right. but like when they come up and they don't even want to sit down right away, you kind of know right then. Right. And a lot of times, you know, psych problems go with homelessness, right. so that's why these people, not, not to say that they can't be helped or anything, but they, they're struggling so hard, and I just credited them for getting in line and standing in line and yeah. paying attention to everybody in line and doing what they're supposed to do to get here. And I just kept thanking them for coming because 
you know, it's really hard to get here at one in the morning and wait outside and, oh, yeah. and not feel well. You have, to, you have to want to do it. And they want to do it, and then some of them get all the way here and then leave because yeah. they get nervous. You know, they're in an enclosed space. I have a volunteer with them. Yes. Do, you, do you travel around with the organization? Um, I travel usually to urban, urban cities. So far, I've been to every urban city that they they've worked at. No, I'm from San Francisco. Um, with Remote Area Medical, I started with their first urban project, which was Los Angeles. Was, was, last, was, was that last year? 2009. 2009. 2009. Okay, so it's been a couple of years yeah. in it. And they were really understaffed. Right. So okay. people came from all over the country trying to help them as best they could. Sure. Unfortunately, with the exception of um, Illinois and Tennessee, yeah. volunteer nurses, doctors, dentists um, have to be licensed in the state that they're practicing and even if they're volunteering. But I'm an EMT and okay. luckily with an EMT you can go anywhere and perform the same things right. that a nurse is doing. Right without having to have individual licenses. Right. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's the way we work. They're always shorthanded, mm -hmm. and so someone might be working registration because they don't have enough people. Next, you're here doing triage because they don't have enough people doing that. Right. Then the dentists need assistance. Right. So there you are learning dental. So you might have a mask on in a few minutes. Going yeah, and, uh, and oftentimes you see that person you brought into registration Registration and later triage, yeah. and they're sitting there looking up, wondering, <laughs> "Is this guy the dentist too?" Um, which you know, yeah. they're lucky. It's yeah. not the case. Yeah. I mean, these are vacations for most of these people. So really? I try three, four times a year if I can. Wow. It all depends on how long a period of time. It so is. you don't have much of your own vacation then? This is vacation. This is it. Yeah. They, oh, I don't, I don't they, they've been to LA, okay. they've been to Sacramento, California, Oakland, California. Um, they went back to New Orleans last year and now here. Okay. I tell you, it's more difficult than seeing people who might be on the street for a period of time and something's happened in life and they probably never will recover right and you're 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 helping them because they need help right. is when you see people that are middle class and right. they've lost their job and they've lost their insurance and yeah. they've lost their home and you're looking at these people realizing you are them yeah. and they are you yeah um, and you know next year you might be the one yeah. in that line we're all and, closer to that yeah than, than and we realize and it's really a shame because those you know if the priorities got straightened out in this country those people would be working and they'd have the time to volunteer Right. And we we have the means to get to the people in the street that really, really need the help. The best thing this country could do yeah. is if they'd get it together in Washington, it wouldn't cost any money, mm -hmm. and just say, people with professional licenses can volunteer right. in any state. A doctor's a doctor and a nurse is a nurse. Yeah. I mean, they're not yeah. trying to steal someone's job or right. practice. Right. They're going to volunteer to sure. help. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Would you do would you do it again? In a minute. Yeah. And and I would travel now. I normally do things mainly in Illinois just yeah. because I feel this is the need and I work in Illinois. The people that I've met here have opened my eyes up to get out of Illinois and go all over. Yeah. And that's the lesson the I need, learned. The need is bigger. The need is much bigger than this state and yeah. I've always thought you know I'm just staying here I want my money staying here yeah. the need is universal and that is something I've taken back from all the people that I've met here that are here from out of state right. and I, I look at it and I just say you know somebody's got to do something very few people are doing anything at least I can sleep in that sure it's the most I can do yeah. and, and I'm doing it yeah and there's people in this country that have far more authority mm -hmm. and um, they're far more in the public eye mm -hmm. and they have far more money in their banks and pockets mm -hmm. and they need to start doing it too yeah. because you know a group of retirees from Tennessee are not going to be able to hold the country together in that day. Yeah.